that is one big pile of shit. Welcome back to Wordy and Nerdy. Today we're introducing a new segment called Nerd Breakdown. Today we are going to talk about internals and break down why it's the worst MCU movie of all time. Yes, even worse than this movie. Before we get too far in the video, if you enjoy this movie and had fun, awesome. I'm glad you had fun. Also, spoilers from this point going forward, I'll be talking about the entire movie and Shang-Chi for a little bit. So if you're not completely copped up, please leave now. And I will break up this video into three different parts, character, plot, and setup. Alright, let's begin. Say whatever you want about the MCU movie, how they all have the same tone but have different directors with a new coat of paint. One thing they always get right is the characters. They always get you invested into their journeys and how the characters change throughout the movie. For, re for example, in the most recent movie, Shang-Chi, we have a character that has run away from his past and has no clear direction for his life. He's spending most of the time with his best friend at a job that is not going anywhere. Over the course of the movie, we see him accept his past and become the hero he needs to be. Now, let's look at the movie internals. Alright, we have 10 main characters, a couple of side characters, and we have a plot that spans a long course of time. That is a lot to ask for a movie. But hey, they did Guardians of the Galaxy, introduce a brand new world, introduce heart, action, and humor and introduce five different characters. So they can definitely do this. And plus, this is one of the longest MCU movies of all time. This gives the director plenty of time to flesh out each of the characters. Sadly, we didn't get that. Instead, we got a movie that jumps from place to place, spinning, on, spinning its time with scenes that are unnecessary, which cause characters to fall into four different categories. Not being completely rushed out, okay, but nothing special, Horrible decision slash being dumb, being the absolute worst MCU character of all time. Who? I hate when people underestimate my fastness. I'm fast. I'm so fast, you couldn't even comprehend how fast I am. Yes, that's right. We're doing a two-for-one special where you're talking about both characters. Because I don't have much to talk about them. Let's talk about Druick. Druick no longer believes in their mission. He believes humans are violent beings that cause nothing but war and chaos. So instead of teaching them, like the other characters, he decided to mind control them and make his own society in the forest. Everything I just said sounds like a pretty compelling setup for a villain, right? Nope. Instead, we get a character that mind controls everyone and does nothing else. He doesn't add anything else in the movie. I don't mind them going this direction, but just give me a reason why. Did he try to expand his powers, but never had a chance to? He was not powerful enough? Did he suddenly see humanity as good beings? Just give me something. Anything. But the movie doesn't. What about everyone's favorite speedster? A speedster who can speak sign language. Makes the casual Marvel MCU joke. There's nothing wrong with the jokes, but they're not written by a comedy writer like James Gunn or Taika Waititi, so the jokes just come off as something you will forget five minutes after the movie. What about that scene that everyone talks about? While I agree that scene is incredible and the best scene in the entire movie, one scene does not make up for an undeveloped character. Also, did everyone forget about that beautiful scene in Justice League where Flash reverses time and saves everyone. Why I agree, DC mostly gets everything wrong. I believe DC actually got this right for once. I would watch this scene any day over any scene in this movie. What about their relationship together? They have the most undeveloped romantic relationship I have ever seen put to film. They share a total of one scene alone where Druick is mind-controlling people, why everyone's favorite speedster is stealing artifacts. That's it. They both agree to share it, not share it with others. Okay, whatever. Now suddenly in present day, they are flirting and seem to be in a relationship. Did I miss a scene? Like, really? 
This comes out of nowhere. Even the other characters are shocked this happened. <sighs> and I can't even tell if they're a good or bad couple because the movie spends so little time with them. That's pretty much the characters. Both characters could use more scenes to become a great character. But sadly, we didn't get that. So they fall under the categories of characters that are not completely fleshed out. Oh no, I'm sorry. I I suffer from short-term memory loss. Welcome, punch! Yes, another two-for-one special, Thena and Gomez. Thena is a warrior suffering from PTSD. My problem is Thena is that they don't spend any time with her. For example, throughout the movie, she's suffering from PTSD, from being reset over time. This has caused her to not recognize the difference between friend and foe, leading to fights within the team. Then all of a sudden, near the end of the movie, it seems like she has a complete control of it for some reason. They never explain how she got over it or how she dealt with it. I have no idea how she did it. The movie never answers it. She just got over it. Like, really? That was a cool idea, and you just dropped the ball in execution. Now, let's talk about Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is a character with the power of Falcon Punch, and it has a relationship with Dina. My problem with him, they don't spend any time with him. For example, he's meant to be the love interest for Dina. They share a couple of nice words together, and about how Gilgamesh would watch over Dina no matter what. Then shortly after those words, he dies, and you don't feel anything because you have no screen time at all with him, and the movie expects you to have emotions about it, but you clearly don't. So that's pretty much the two characters. Both characters have potential to be great characters with maybe a few more scenes, but sadly, we didn't get that, so they land in the category of characters that are not completely fleshed out. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Fastos, a inventor who accidentally gave humans the idea of the atomic bomb and many other weapons. Fastos is the only character I like in this entire movie. His story about how he lost faith in Manny after the atomic bomb went off and gained faith after he created a family of his own, is the only compelling arc in this entire movie. I wish he was the main character we were following instead of Cersei. Also, I can't get over the fact that we are told Icarus is the most powerful person on the team, but later on, Fastos just holds his man down in chains in the third act. Also, the only minor mistake that I don't like about his character is that they come to him and tell them that the emergence is happening and the earth is probably going to explode. He doesn't want to be a part of it because he has a family now. Hey, Fastos, your family lives on earth, so you kind of need to help out with this. Other than that tiny mistake, I enjoyed his character. Too bad we don't have a spot for him. Oh wait, where did the surprise tear come from? I guess he has to go there. Thanks, Magic Tear List. Kango, a gunslinger who used his internal life to become a movie star for many lifetimes. Kango is your typical Marvel character. He makes a mix of jokes from good to bad. He reminds me of Star-Lord, a lovable dumbass with a heart of gold. I enjoyed him for the most part until the third act. During the third act, Icarus is revealed to be the main villain and he wants emergence to happen. A fight breaks out, Icarus injures one of the team members with his lasers and leaves with Sprite. After the whole situation, he doesn't want to go with the rest of the team to stop Icarus because his loyalty to Icarus. Excuse me for one second. What? What the fuck? This is the dumbest decision a character has ever made. Let's break this down. First, why does Kango have a dying loyalty to Icarus? Icarus spends most of his lifetime dating Cersei and dedicated to the mission. When did Icarus and Kango have time to build this bro ship because it's not shown in the movie? Second, Icarus just shot a laser and injured one of the team members. A clear sign that this man needs to be stopped. But nah, Kango's bro ship beats a friend being injured for some reason. Last, the most critical reason, the earth is going to explode if you don't help out. 
of all the people in the entire team you benefit the most from the human race you are a freaking movie star also where are you going to go why are you running why are you running? do you have another spaceship because a spaceship is the only way you're going to survive the earth exploding also you're being a real asshole right now you're bringing along a human friend throughout this entire movie and you just told him straight to his face that you don't care about the humans and you're willing to let the earth explode what a great character it's generally magic how they turn a likable character into a complete asshole within five minutes let's put him on the tier list and move on to the next character bitch are you dumb pardon me are you dumb i think she's, I dumb. Think she's dumb i think she's dumb ajax the team leader and knows why they are on earth ajax is the worst leader in all of history let's break this down she was told by the red judge that her job is to kill the deviants to allow human population to grow so the emergence can happen and give birth to new life none of the internals know about this mission except for icarus slowly over time she gained a relationship with the humans and she no longer wants the emergence to happen so instead of telling the other people about this she tells icarus that just makes no fucking sense i mean it's just bullshit Fuck. why would you tell him he has came up to you multiple times throughout this movie saying how he's dedicated to this mission and he won't let anything describe him. why would you go to him so you go to him like a dedicated soldier he kills you immediately and blames the whole situation on you why would you go to him that is the dumbest choice you could have made you could have just gone to someone else but no, you just caused this whole situation because you weren't thinking at all. All right, let's put her on the tier list and move on. Kid now. All right, a shapeshifter who's unable to grow and has the weirdest crush I have seen in any movie. She is supposed to be the comic relief and takes no shit from anyone for being small. I enjoyed her and that she was a great character until Kingo randomly says Sprite is like Tinkerbell and Icarus is like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell is unable to be with Peter because she's a fairy bro what are you talking about man this comes out of nowhere and it's never explained in the entire movie why Sprite has feelings for Icarus it just it's nowhere Icarus treats her like a friend nothing more so it's not going to work out anyway plus it's just weird I know Sprite is the same age but can't grow, but she looks like a child and it's weird to imagine them being together because Icarus looks like a grown man and Sprite looks like a child. It's just gonna be weird. How you doing? All right, how you? have a seat over in that chair, please. Why was this necessary at all? I guess because she has feelings for Icarus, but it makes no sense because Icarus portrays everyone in this entire movie and is about to explode the earth so you're willing to let the earth explode and be an asshole to your friends just to be with them what a great character ruined by horrible decisions by the director let's put her on the list do something cat cersei the main character of the movie and the formal lover of Icarus. My problem with Cersei is that the movie completely forgets about her. For example, Cersei was a formal lover of Icarus. Do we get to see any chemistry and see why they were couples? Nope. Do we get to see a reason why they broke up? Nope. Do we get to see any chemistry with her new boyfriend, Kit Harrington, and see why they are together? Nope. They don't do any of that instead we get a total of five minutes with kid here in 10 so we get to see no development with the relationship at all what was the point of kid harrington's character in this entire movie no idea all right maybe i will like the icarus relationship well it's just watching two robots who have no emotions at all talk to each other 
it's just a complete waste of time for the movie because it's no chemistry at all and it's clearly that Icarus wants Cersei and it's not the other way around at all and it's just terrible to watch and it's a waste of time. I just wish she did more in this movie but she doesn't. It's just her just not telling Icarus hey I moved on. I don't know why she never does this in the entire movie but she doesn't. So yeah a character that's okay but should have done more in this entire movie. Oh brother this guy stinks! Icarus, the actual main villain and loyal soldier to the Red Judge. So I already talked about how I hate Icarus and Cersei's relationship. So I'm not going to waste any more time on that. Let's just talk about how he's the dumbest character in the MCU. So Ajax just told him that she no longer wants to listen to the Red Judge and wants to save humans. So what is his plan? He kills Ajax. Alright, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Alright, he brings the dead body back to the house for some reason. I don't know why you did that. You could have just left it in the cave or threw it in space. But minor, minor error. Long as you don't bring Cersei and back to the dead body, you should be all good. And like that, you've lost me. Not only does he bring them to their dead body, he brings together the entire team. The only team that can stop him. Why does he do this? I have no idea. It's the dumbest decision I have ever seen in the entire movie. Some people say online that's because he's grown a heart for humanity. That doesn't make any sense because why would he all of a sudden betray them in the third act? That doesn't make any sense. If he has grown heart for humanity, he wouldn't have betrayed them. He wouldn't have brought them together and then betray them. He would have done one or another. Okay, so he's just a dumb character. Does he learn his lesson or anything? Nope. He decides to kill himself and throw himself in the sun. Why? 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 It's just a complete waste of a proper Superman in the MCU. Also, I am so tired of this evil Superman thing. We have already tried it with DC. We have already tried it with the boys. We have already tried it with Invincibles. This is the fourth time you're doing this. And you're not doing any better than the previous evil Supermans. So it just comes off boring and a complete waste of a Superman in the MCU. If you're not going to do something new, what's the point of trying? I guess to waste people's time? just like this movie does <sighs> all right let's add him to the list and talk about the results so in total we have one good character one okay character four characters that could have been completely cut out of this movie three characters that are actually the dumbest characters of all time and then the worst character of all time good job marvel you somehow made a movie with only one likable character. Good job. Let's move on to the lot. All right, I did enjoy the characters in this movie. Maybe I'll enjoy the plot. What is the plot? They are sent to Earth to stop the Deviants. Later we find out the Deviants are actually good and they're trying to stop the Emergence from happening. The Emergence will blow up the Earth and some of the team members don't want this to happen. How does this movie tell this plot? Well, it tells it by flashbacks. Because this movie doesn't know how to make a streamlined movie that makes sense. So they end up cutting between flashbacks, present day, flashback, present day, flashback, present day. And it goes this constant back and forth. And it doesn't make you invest in the movie because you might be invested with the stuff that happening in present day. But then it cuts to the past. You might be invested with stuff that's happening in the past. But they cut to the present. So it's just a complete confusing mess that's not enjoyable to watch at all. And it's just boring. It's not fun to watch. Also, why couldn't this movie just do all the important stuff in the first 30 minutes of the movie? Like all the past stuff. And then... 
the rest of the movie is dumb in the present stopping the whole situation. But no, they want to do this constant back and forth where it's fighting over screen time and it just boards the audience and makes them more and more confused. This should have been a TV show. This has 10 characters and none of them are completely fleshed out. And it's clear that Marvel has the budget with the other Marvel shows and Mandalorian. They could have done this on a TV show. This movie is not that grand either. It's mostly them going to place the place to talking to characters. You might down have to cut down on the CGI here and there, but that's it. This could have been a TV show and could have been way better. This section I would like to call unanswered questions. First, who are the deviants and why do they come to Earth? No idea. The movie never explores the deviants at all. They even include a deviant that can speak English and becomes a villain later on in this movie, but they do nothing with him. And it's just a complete waste of time shoehorning him in. Why are there two villains in this movie? No idea. It should have just been one. But Marvel wanted to do two villains for some reason and completely waste our time. Third question, why doesn't the Red Judge just teleport them off the Earth when they're stopping the emergence? Near the end of the movie, it's shown that Red Judge can just take them from any place and stop them. He just doesn't do it when they go off protocol. I don't know why he doesn't. He should have if he wanted the emergence to happen. But he just doesn't. Last question. Why are the deviants stuck in ice? The movie never explains how they got frozen and why they're suddenly defrosting now. Did the Red Judge send them? Nope. No one knows why they are randomly coming back. <sighs> just so many under unanswered questions they could have answered in this movie to make it a better viewing experience but they did it all right let's move on a lot of people including me give amazing spider-man 2 shit for being a setup movie this movie is the exact same way for example it sets up three movies it sets up a movie where the remaining team team over harry style to rescue everyone from the red judge we also get a setup for Kit Harrington actually doing something in a future Marvel movie. Wow, amazing, because he didn't do anything in this movie. <sighs> and last but not least, we get a tease for Blade. Yes, that voice at the end was Blade. Why is he in this movie? No idea. The movie never explains that at all, and it thinks it's cool just teasing Blade all of a sudden, even though there's no reason to tease that in this movie overall we have a movie that is teasing a bunch of more interesting movies in the future and this movie just feels like homework a movie that should have been a tv show allowing characters to be more fleshed out and a movie that is completely ruining its pacing with constant flashbacks <sighs> and that is the movie internals i want to thank you for watching this entire video and i hope you enjoyed this movie breakdown and i want to apologize for this late upload life just gets crazy sometimes and i promise you the next video will be with ren and it will not take a long time to come out during that time you should go follow us on twitch aaron has a podcast with her best friend where she talks about her love of music also, you should go follow Ren on TikTok. Other than that, guys, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And see you guys in the next video. Bye.